Francisco, Mercy, the robot uprising is fast approaching. Market research company Forrester recently predicted that by the year 2021, 6% of all U.S. jobs would be done by robots. That would obviously affect millions of people. And here to determine just how likely we are to see a robo-president in the next five years, it's Dr. Michio Kaku, professor, professor rather, of theoretical physics at the City College of New York. Welcome back. Glad to be on the show. So a lot of people are scared about being replaced by robots. You say there are some areas which will be taken over by them. What are those areas? Well, we've been brainwashed by Hollywood to think that robots are going to put us in cages and throw peanuts at us and oh, make no. us dance behind bars, mm -hmm. right? The people that do have to worry, however, are people, first of all, involved with repetitive jobs, mm -hmm. factory workers, garment workers, because that's what robots are. They're adding machines. Yeah. They don't really think. We think they think, but they just add very, very fast. So first, repetitive workers. Second, in the next 10 to 20 years, middle, uh, middlemen workers, people who are involved in brokerage, agents, mm. accounting, low-level accounting, tellers. The middlemen jobs, the so-called friction of capitalism, mm. those jobs are going to be threatened. And the jobs that are least threatened are those jobs that involve pattern recognition, eyesight. For example, gardeners, construction ah. workers, policemen, they're not repetitive. It requires eyesight and pattern recognition. So anything Plus, that, that uses uh, uniquely human biology is probably safe. Exactly. Plus innovation, creativity, uh, analysis, leadership, intellectual workers. Intellectual workers are the most impervious because robots are good at commodity capital, so basically, not intellectual capital. Rich people with fancy pants jobs, they're pretty safe, but people with low skilled jobs, they're on the chopping block and they are going to be thrown in cages with peanuts thrown at them. Unless they have non-repetitive work, like, for example, policemen, every crime mm -hmm. is different. Yeah. Construction worker, every construction site is different. Gardens, every garden is different. Yeah. Repetitive workers, those are the ones that could get wiped out. All right, so if you're on an assembly line, good luck to you. That's all I have to say. Or you're going to figure something out and have a ton of leisure time. Now, if robots fail to wipe us out... Don't worry, there's still a chance for our apocalyptic doom. Earlier this month, Chinese astronomers reportedly spotted a large asteroid hurtling towards Earth. It could come within a few million miles of our little blue marble, but even that's too close for comfort because if the trajectory changes even a tiny bit, it could hit us with an impact equivalent to three billion atomic bombs. So, Dr. Kaku, how long do we have to live? Where is Bruce Willis when you need him the most? I don't know. We need him to, like, blow that thing up with an atomic bomb. Well, first of all, we have to realize that planet busters, mm -hmm. like what hit the dinosaurs 65 million years ago, they happen at the rate of maybe once every 50 million years, a planet buster. Yeah. Now, a but nation that was buster. 65 million years ago. Yeah. Well, oh, remember no. the dinosaurs. Aren't we due? The dinosaurs didn't have a space program, yeah. right? And that's why the dinosaurs are not Far here today. As far as we know. Now, a nation buster happens every few thousand years. That could wipe out Germany or England. Yeah. And there is a, planet, there is a uh, nation buster up there called Apophis. If there's one nation that you hope uh, absorbs that asteroid, which one is it? Uh, well, I would hope it's somewhere in the Pacific Ocean. Okay. <laughs> Maybe Atlantis. <laughs> okay. And then there's city busters that, and that hit the earth at the rate of maybe once every hundred years. We had two of them that hit Russia, one a few years ago and one about a century ago. Mm -hmm. So by every hundred years, we have a city buster. Now, this asteroid, we don't know how big it is. There's some d debate as to how big it is. But yeah, there are planet busters out there. In fact, there are thousands of them. In fact, going down to the sides of a football field, we think there are millions of them that haven't been cataloged yet. Should we be more worried about a planet buster asteroid taking us all out or AI and being absorbed into a matrix by a computer that's smarter than we are? Well, I think we've seen too many movies because even, <laughs> uh, even the matrix to simulate a game of Go, for example, yeah. would require uh, using every single atom of the universe. It would take a universe just to model all the possible games of Go. Yeah. To model the weather would require, again, a, a computer the size of the universe. We think that the smallest computer that can model the weather is the weather itself. That's heavy, man. Dr. Michio Kaku, thank you so much for your insight, as always. Mm -hmm. My pleasure. No matter how absurd the question, you always answer it with the fiercest intelligence I've ever known. Thanks again. Mm -hmm.